Imagine you're an architect tasked with designing a unique, multifaceted glass dome for a new museum. Your goal is to use triangular glass panels to cover the entire structure, ensuring both stability and aesthetic appeal. In how many ways can you achieve this design? This challenge brings us to a fascinating concept in mathematics, the Catalan numbers. Originally, these numbers were introduced to solve the problem of polygon triangulation which is essentially the process of dividing a polygon into non-overlapping triangles. Let's dive deeper. Consider a simple polygon with n sides. The Catalan numbers tell us the number of ways we can divide this polygon into triangles by drawing non-intersecting diagonals. In this video, we'll explore precisely this combinatorial interpretation of the Catalan numbers that helps us solve real-world problems like these. Let's start by understanding how these numbers are defined and build up to the recurrence formula that beautifully captures their essence. The nth Catalan number, denoted as c sub n, can be expressed using the following recurrence formula as follows. However, this isn't the only way to define the Catalan numbers. We can define them also using this explicit formula. We will later prove both the explicit and recurrence formulas. The Catalan numbers are named after the Belgian mathematician Eugene Charles Catalan, who first discovered the explicit formula for them in 1838 in the context of counting well-formed sequences of parentheses. The recurrence formula, however, was discovered earlier by the Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler in 1751 in the context of the number of triangulations of an n plus 2 gon, though it was not specifically associated with the sequence we now call the Catalan numbers. It is only until 1976 when this name became popular in math reviews. The significance of Catalan numbers extends beyond their mathematical definitions. Richard Peter Stanley, a British mathematician, compiled an extensive collection of combinatorial interpretations of the Catalan numbers. His work is documented in his book titled Catalan Numbers, highlighting the diverse ways in which they appear in various mathematical contexts. Stanley's contributions have paved the way for a deeper understanding of Catalan numbers and their applications. Now we will prove that the recurrence relation above matches with the problem defined in the beginning. Before starting the proof, we will first formulate the problem of triangulizing a polygon. Let Pn plus 2 denote a convex polygon in the plane with n plus 2 vertices. A triangulation of Pn plus 2 is a set of d minus 1 diagonals of Pn plus 2, which do not cross. It follows easily that these diagonals partition the interior of Pn plus 2 into n triangles. Now the nth Catalan number is precisely the number of triangulations of Pn plus 2. Now in order to obtain the recurrence formula, we'll proceed by strong induction. Let Pn plus 3 be a convex n plus 3 gon. Fix an edge E of Pn plus 3 and let T be a triangulation of Pn plus 3. When we remove the edge E from T, we obtain two triangulated polygons, say Q1 and Q2, with one common vertex. If QI has AI plus two vertices, where AI is the number of vertices excluding the common vertex and the vertex attached to E, then the sum of A1 and A2 will be precisely N. Now, it is possible that one of Q1 or Q2 is just a single edge which occurs when the triangle of T containing E has an additional edge on Pn plus 3 necessarily adjacent to E. In this case, we consider the edge as a 2 gon, which has one triangulation. Conversely, given two triangulated polygons with A1 plus 2 and A2 plus 2 vertices, where A1 and A2 have the same meaning as before, we can put them together to form a triangulated n plus 3 gon by reversing the above procedure. Now, since there are C sub AI triangulations of QI, we can obtain the recurrence and initial condition by summing over all possible values of AI. Before starting the proof, we need some tools from calculus. Precisely, we need what we call a generating function and some properties related to it. A generating function of a classical number, in our case the Catalan number, is an infinite sum or series of the following form. Note that this is a formal power series, which means that it is a function in the form of a series that we are not interested in studying its convergence. This means that plugging in values for x doesn't really have much meaning or significance. 
An important formula that we will use while studying this kind of function is what we call a Cauchy product of two generating functions. Let a and b be two generating functions for two numbers a n and b n. Then we define their Cauchy product by the following formula. The last formula we need is the generalized binomial theorem, which is defined by the following formula, where the generalized binomial coefficient is expressed like this. With these tools, we are now ready to prove the explicit formula for the Catalan numbers. As a first step, we will prove that the previous generating function is equal to the following. To obtain this, we'll start from the recurrence relation. We'll multiply both sides by x raised to the n, and then take the sum over all values of n which are non-negative. On the left-hand side, you can see that this is nothing but a Cauchy product of the generating function of the Catalan numbers multiplied by itself, and so this can be simplified to cx quantity squared. The right-hand side looks very similar to our original generating function. In fact, there just happens to be an index shift, which can be fixed by subtracting 1 and then dividing by x. Thus, on both sides, we obtain the following equality, which can be re-expressed as a quadratic equation for c of x. Now, by regarding c of x as a variable of its own, we can solve this quadratic for values of c of x, which depend on x. And this gives us the following two solutions. We've got now to determine the correct sign. We'll start by taking the positive branch of the square root. Observe that using the generalized binomial theorem, we can expand the square root of 1 minus 4x as follows. Now if we plug this expansion into our positive branch solution, we get a term of 1 over x on the right hand side, which doesn't match our generating function. And so we must take the negative branch. We can check that this does indeed hold. Equipped with this, we can now demonstrate the explicit formula for the Catalan numbers. We'll do this by re-expressing the coefficients of the generating function. Recall again that from the generalized binomial theorem, we can re-express the square root of 1 minus 4x as follows. Now, plugging this in the formula of the generating function gives us the following. We'll apply now the following index shift in the series. Observe that the very first term in the series, which corresponds to the index of minus 1, gives us a 1 over x. And thanks to the negative sign outside the series, we may cancel it with the already existing 1 over x. And so the whole thing simplifies to the following. By definition of the generalized binomial coefficient, you can check that 1 half choose n plus 1 simplifies to this, where the double exclamation mark denotes the double factorial, defined as follows. Plugging this in the series gives us the following. Now by simplifying the exponents along the minus one half outside the series, we get this. We want a term of 2n quantity factorial to appear, and to get this, we're gonna multiply and divide by 2n double factorial. Now on the denominator, you can remark that 2n quantity double factorial can be re-expressed as 2 to the n times n factorial. And so this gives us the following. And finally, by remarking that n factorial is equal to 2n minus n factorial, we get our binomial coefficient of 2n choose n. Now, since this is exactly our generating function, the coefficient of the nth term of this series is precisely the nth Catalan number, and so we get our desired equality. In this video, we have explored Catalan numbers. We began by introducing the concept and understanding their significance in combinatorics. Then we explore the recurrence relation that defines them, followed by deriving their explicit formula. These key points have given us a solid foundation to appreciate the beauty and applications of Catalan numbers in various mathematical problems. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful math content. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also be sure to check the description below for some great resources to further your understanding of Catalan numbers. Thank you so much for watching, your support means a lot to us. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of mathematics. See you in the next video.